Difficulty in video games is a really weird thing to nail down exactly what it is, and From Software's Souls games have practically become renowned, and their defining feature is the fact that they're hard and or difficult. And so today, we're going to be ranking every single Souls game from easiest to hardest. But what makes a game difficult, you may ask? Well, that question of in and of itself could warrant an entire video. However, for this, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to be ranking most of these games basically on their level design, their boss complexity, and so on. Essentially, the base layer mechanics and how difficult they may be to initially learn and what the learning curve of that is really like. And so this is going to be my opinion of what are the Soulsborne games ranked easiest to hardest. Just before we get into that, though, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Omni Heroes. Lads, listen up. I, I know y'all are bored with your current games and you're looking for something to shake it up a bit. Well, look, I got you. Omni Heroes is a heroic fantasy casual strategy RPG game that's highly rated on Google Play and the App Store. Playing as an Omni Guardian, you use a plethora of uniquely designed heroes that you strategize and battle to rescue Valkyries that are captive and create the best team synergy on your own in the process. You can play the game a bit more active and be doing it yourself, or you can sit back and chill and just let the automated mechanics play the game for you as well either way. There's also a new event called Ash and Phantom that features a brand new storyline and a roguelike deck builder in gameplay. If you haven't now, now is the best time to check it out and get started. Go get it now and you'll have 777 free summons and 5 legendary heroes in the first week. You won't want to miss out on this opportunity to go and have fun, so check out the link in the description and go have a great time with Omni Heroes, and thank you very much to them for sponsoring today's video. So coming in at the overall easiest game in the Soulsborne series is going to be Demon Souls, and this is for a variety of reasons. Firstly, the way the health and healing system works. In Dark Souls, they would introduce the Estus Flask, and that would carry into Dark Souls 2, DS3, and even a system like that similar in Elden Ring. However, in Demon Souls, this healing is a little bit more free form. You can carry these different types of grass and these will heal you at various capacities and the only thing that really limits this entire thing from getting out of hand is the fact that if you die and basically go hollow in this game you lose like half your health unless you you know restore that humanity but otherwise if you're beating bosses and not really dying and are able to you know stay restored at full health it's pretty hard to die through traditional means especially if you have a lot of healing capacity on you uh, it's a very easy game just to stay alive in when it comes to level design I would say it is a bit more tricky. Uh, there is a few things that I would consider to be maybe a little bit unearned or cheap difficulty, and that is a thing that will happen in later games for sure, but Demon Souls isn't too bad here. I think its level design is certainly above average, and for being From Software's first game really trying this kind of style, I think it's exceptionally done. Now, when I'm speaking about that, I mean specifically the actual layouts and, and paths of the level. Uh, there are a few things, like there's not many good, you know, shortcut for boss runbacks and stuff like that they would do a lot more of the shortcut stuff later in dark souls one but i should also mention the very unique level design in demon souls with the nexus you basically have these worlds with different checkpoints that the optimal route is to kind of go mixing in between worlds throughout your path instead of like going into world and completely clearing it it's almost like mario levels uh and this level design is a bit more uh, i would say rigid and they would definitely do away with that in like dark souls one which to in comparison was kind of like open world this was not. Now as far as Demon Souls bosses go, this is a bit of a different story as each and every single boss in Demon Souls is what you might call a gimmick boss. There's only a few of them, like compared to the rest of the Soul series, it doesn't have the largest selection of bosses. However, I do feel the bosses in Demon Souls have been much more thoroughly thought out than let's say, you know, a bunch of the bosses in Dark Souls 2. While there are some exceptions, I think the Demon Souls boss lineup is pretty darn average, like in a good way. It's got a solid batting average. There's not anything that is incredibly standout compared to the rest of the Soulsborne franchise, but there's not really a whole lot of outright terrible ones either. Maybe there's a few or confusing bosses here and there, but Demon Souls has a very unique selection of bosses that you may either love or hate. Regardless though, I think they're incredibly learnable as they, again, have one really method of approach that will make the boss fight a cakewalk, and if you know these things, then the game is actually exceptionally easy. Demon Souls, when it first originally came out, was renowned for being such a hard game because obviously there was nothing like it at the time but if you as 
a player are experienced in something like Dark Souls or just any of the Souls series, Demon Souls is going to feel significantly easier to you. There's a bunch of quality of life changes that Dark Souls would also made that would not appear in Demon Souls, and that can be frustrating but not necessarily difficult. I think Demon Souls is very fairly rated as probably the easiest Soulsborne game because they just didn't have the time or experience to develop the games into the complexity that they would have in the more modern titles. So moving on to our next game, we have Dark Souls 2, and I want to add a huge caveat here. If we're talking about the original version of Dark Souls, this is probably going to be the easiest Soulsborne game. I would even say it's easier than Demon Souls. However, if we're talking about Scholar of the First Sin, it gets a little bit more complicated. And for the sake of this video, we're going to be talking about Scholar because that is the one that From Software considers to be the definitive edition of the game. So the original copy aside, with Scholar, I do think that it is slightly harder than Demon Souls, but admittedly a lot of the difficulty is for all of the wrong reasons and what i mean by that is the absolutely obnoxious level design and enemy placements and there's a lot of like prank and or gotcha moments in dark souls 2 that yeah if you're playing this blind for the first time if you don't know anything about it you're pretty much 100 gonna die to but it's not really like a teachable moment there's no point to it other than to troll you so if you're defining difficulty by number of deaths then dark souls 2 will probably be up there a lot because it's a very bloated game with not amazing particularly intuitive level design and especially with scholar some of the enemy placements just feel downright cruel I should say another thing that makes this game on the easier side is it has the most generous healing system of any Souls game. You have the traditional Estus Flask that was introduced in Dark Souls 1 that is basically your primary method of healing, but you also have life gems, and this can kind of be thought of as the grass from Demon Souls where it restores your HP over time, there's different rarities and strengths of life gems and so on, and these are almost infinitely stackable. While they are a consumable resource, you can buy an absolutely as absurd amount of these that completely break the risk reward progression of the game playing ds2 while not using a lot of life gems versus you know using a ton of them is a totally different experience so depending on how you decided to interact with the game you'll probably have a much different take on it compared to somebody who did it differently the thing is as well with dark souls 2 they really expanded the rpg stat mechanic not in a way that was super helpful basically the worst thing that they did was add a stat called ADP, which adaptability basically defines a, a, a variety of very important mechanics such as invincibility frames, you know, your iframes when you roll, the amount of time it takes to use a healing item, even spell casting, etc. Like pretty much everything important that a player can do as an action is tied to this stat and people go, bro, just level up ADP. And it's like, sure, but if that's the case, why not make the, you know, ADP when it's leveled up, those the base mechanics if everybody's just going to do it anyways like if if that's the, what you want to get to as far as leveling leveling it up then why don't we just start with that and then do away with adaptability entirely it's a completely pointless mechanic and is only added to fluff up the sense of progression to get back to where you should have been anyways it's so artificial i would say artificial difficulty is the way to sum up ds2 when it comes to bosses and their respective fights uh there are a lot in this game obviously dark souls 2 has like basically the most amount of bosses besides maybe Elden Ring and that's not necessarily a compliment because most of the bosses are very underwhelming and or half-baked and some are just downright stupid. I think Dark Souls 2 fundamentally failed to understand what makes difficulty satisfying in games, and they looked at Dark Souls 1 and said, let's recreate that, but had no idea of what made that game work. I've talked a lot about why Dark Souls 2 is the definition of artificial difficulty. Go watch this video if you haven't, but yeah, I would say otherwise, it's probably the easiest game in the Soulsborne series. If you're talking the original version, Scholar may be a little bit different. I would say it's just maybe a cut above Demon Souls in that way. Moving on, coming up just above that is the classic Dark Souls 1. This is the game where it started for a lot of people, and of, of course, it's iconic, it's legendary, but I would say it's certainly not the hardest game in the series. I think much of its difficulty was conflated with the fact that it was so different at the time, very similar to Demon's Souls. And compared to the rest of video games at large, Dark Souls 1 is an exceptionally hard game, but in the ranking of Soulsborne games specifically, 
specifically, I cannot honestly say Dark Souls 1 is like the most difficult game ever. I feel like DS1 is a big melting pot of a couple of things, you know, some really genuinely handcrafted moments that are excellent, they're challenging, and they're fun to progress through. You have boss fights, you know, a, a handful of them are like actually top tier, some insanely well-designed fights, and then you also have a couple of, you know, spammy, unfortunately, pranky moments, uh, some not great level design, some poison swamps, like you know the deal. A lot of the stuff that just doesn't feel great to play in Souls games. But for the most part, everything feels mostly handcrafted and checks out. When it comes to boss fights, I think that most of Dark Souls 1 selection is pretty good, but again, the bosses are on the slightly more simple end, and the combat is fairly slow paced. It almost feels like turn-based combat in a sense when you play a game like Bloodborne or Sekiro and then come back to DS1 the pace of combat feels very very um let's say tactical it's very like push your button wait for enemy to respond then push your button again almost like turn-based combat which is again not a huge criticism necessarily and that's what the game did but i don't think that dark souls 1 can be labeled as like the hardest souls game ever its rpg mechanics were certainly a step up from demon souls and its healing system was pretty straightforward as well and it, this played the most into the risk reward you know player progression pathway and especially like the level traversal the way that estus works with that and everything was probably the most well thought out and tuned here and so when it comes to like tuning dark souls 1 is a great game but it's certainly not the most difficult or challenging one especially once you understand the base mechanics of souls games as it were coming up next pretty much right in the middle of the ranking is going to be dark souls 3 and i absolutely love this game for so many reasons and i do think that it's one of the more challenging Souls games, although not the most. The thing with Dark Souls 3, and I would also say Elden Ring, is the bosses in this game are 1000% objectively harder than the previous ones we just talked about. Their movesets are far more complex, the AI got a lot better, uh, you know, it's less spammable, etc. Like, the bosses are, you know, verifiably more challenging than anything in the previous games. However, you do have more tools to deal with these bosses. They have an expanded move set and thus are objectively more difficult but you have a lot more tools in taking them on so i would say if you use the same kind of tool set that you used against bosses in dark souls 1 or 2 or demon souls then you'll probably find ds3 significantly harder but if you use everything at your disposal in this game without you know fail you take advantage of all of the rpg mechanics the difficulty is going to feel probably about the same as those previous games when it comes to like base player mechanics and healing and stuff i think they got it right in this game for Dark Souls. You know, they brought back the blue mana bar from Demon Souls, and they also got rid of stupid life gems from DS2, which makes this gameplay so much nicer. The level design in Dark Souls 3 is a lot more linear than it is in DS1 or in even Dark Souls 2, and that's not even a bad thing, because I do feel the levels are significantly more finely tuned for player strength and progression and all that. Of course, there's a way to break every level. You can be over-leveled for, you know, basically every single boss if you really want to be or builds that absolutely break the game sure but in general i would say the levels are a lot more finely crafted for how powerful a player will be by the time they get there compared to its predecessors i would also add with an expansion of almost all of the rpg mechanics weapon systems and so on it's the game that you can by far take advantage of the most and completely destroy the meta and or balance which is fair enough for this game i think because again stuff like enemy placements are tough but fair the bosses are a lot more complex most of them are not super difficult but Dark Souls 3 literally has like some of the best lineup of bosses uh, in a Souls game ever in my opinion they're all absolutely solid for the most part and they can be quite challenging if you're not taking advantage of all of the you know expanded systems that DS3 has to offer in a nutshell it's a game that is far harder objectively than its predecessors but there are more ways to abuse it and break it and make it easier if you really want to Coming up next is going to be Elden Ring, which again is a kind of a weird one because I feel it could go almost anywhere on this list, completely depending on how you play it. By virtue of the game's mechanics, you can be as absurdly over-leveled and powerful or under-leveled and a complete weakling as you want to, and that will totally define your experience. Once again, with like Dark Souls 3, the bosses in this game are far more complex than its predecessors. Their expanded movesets, the AI got better, everything. That is objectively more difficult, but 
the thing is you do get even more tools to deal with the game this time i think i would say that raw elden ring you know that is you know just kind of like bare bones gameplay without summons you know very simple weapons etc is probably the hardest game on this list might it might be quite possibly the most difficult because the bosses are no joke and in some sense they are built for you to use these mechanics that can kind of run them over now when it comes to level design it's one of the most unique games in the series because it's the only one that is truly open world and basically infinitely farmable meaning you can spend as much time in the open world as you want gathering levels or points or weapons or other gear or spells incantations you name it you can get whatever you want for these encounters and because of how big and expansive the rpg mechanics the world is and everything the bosses kind of have to be more difficult to compensate for that so do the levels even though it is essentially infinitely farmable this one i had to think about for a long time because i know elden ring will probably be the most contentious pick on this list as it doesn't have a safe place to follow but i will say it's definitely going to be upper average or at least pretty high on the list of overall difficulty in souls games in my opinion up next getting near the very top of our list we have my goat bloodborne chat you know i love this game uh bloodborne is i would say undeniably one of the more difficult souls games for a couple of reasons i would say the performance is a bit of an issue i think fighting in 30 fps is a completely different experience to 60 but i'll leave that aside for now the thing is bloodborne was the first soulsborne game in my opinion to really start leaning into the more like personal skill mechanics of it rather than like the rpg mechanics while they are still present and the RPG stuff is huge in this game, you do have far less variety and choice in what you build and the weapons you use than you do in something like any of the Dark Souls trilogy. It's a lot more restrictive in that sense, but it also means that if you're good at the game, you can use basically anything and still succeed. Now, the base player mechanics and healing are very different from the Dark Souls trilogy. So you have blood vials in this, which are an actual uh, stackable resource in some sense, but they do have a cap on how many that that you can hold also you have the rallying mechanic which is bloodborne's one of its defining features meaning if you get hit you have a certain amount of time to hit the enemy back and retain more of that health this encourages you to be far more aggressive in combat another feature that complements that more aggressive style of combat mechanics is the quick stepping and this is while you're locked on if you you know press the dodge you can quick step instead of rolling although if you lock off you can still roll meaning you can use a variety of these in combination with each other to pick the best defensive option in combat. You also have your pistol, which is your main deterrent for enemy aggression. Now, not all enemies can be parried using the gun, but the ones that can, this is a huge advantage. You basically want to catch the move startup, and if you hit them with a bullet while that move is starting up, you get a free parry punish, meaning that you should pretty much stay on the aggression almost at all times. It's incredibly important and rewarding to get good at parrying in Bloodborne. And not to mention, primary weapons, every single one of them have a different extension or or trick mechanic so for example the saw that I use you can hit your left trigger and then this will actually extend out the hitbox will become bigger but it takes a little bit longer to swing you can use these combinations of extensions and back to normal into each other in combat to deal significant damage and even stun lock the enemy there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this mechanic I will say the level design is pretty on par with DS1 or even DS3 probably that more accurately when it comes to shortcuts and enemy placements and so on the the level design isn't crazy and I will say the boss fights, especially in the base game, are honestly not awesome, or at least uh, they could have been better. I think the DLC bosses are by far some of the best and the most difficult fights in all of Soulsborne games. And Bloodborne is one of the best games at retaining a lot of its RPG mechanics, but really focusing on the emphasis on personal skill and actually getting good and learning at encounters. I'm not saying getting good in like the meme way, I mean actually improving at the game. Last thing I will say, I feel some of the difficulty for Bloodborne, certainly not all of it, but maybe a tiny piece is the fact that it is in 30 frames. You can play a mod that is in 60 FPS, and I personally think it makes the game feel a lot easier because it, it, it kind of makes the game feel slower in some sense. But all things considered, it's a very minor difference, but Bloodborne has to be at least on the higher end of one of the most difficult games in Souls. But coming in at the number one spot, the most difficult game in the entire Soulsborne series is going to be 
Sekiro. Now, it's always a bit of a debate whether Sekiro should be considered a Souls game, I, although I would consider it part of the Soulsborne series. Even though it is very different in some sense, it shares a lot of the same DNA as the rest of the previous games. However, I would say the things that make this different is it's straying away from the RPG mechanics that you can use to soften the difficulty of the game. The thing is as well, Sekiro doesn't have that many bosses in terms of the base game, and it also got no real DLC. So there are far less bosses to fight in general. However, the ones that it does have, I think, are some of the hardest bosses in video games, period. Sekiro is similar to the rest of the Souls games in terms of the general formula, the way that boss fights and player mechanics in terms of healing work and everything, but the way it differs is there is no traditional leveling system. You don't really level up in Sekiro, you don't have a numerical value of your soul level. What you do have is different beads and uh, different, you know, properties that can make your strength higher or your health, but that's really about it. Otherwise, there are no other outside mechanics that can soften up. You can't, like, over-level for a boss in some way. If you're stuck on a boss fight in Elden Ring or in Dark Souls 1 or 3 or, you know, whatever it is, you can basically kill enemies over and over until you out-level, you know, whatever, or you level up any stat you want to make that boss fight a little bit less difficult. You can give yourself more health, more strength, whatever. You can't really do that in this game. Outside of a couple situations using the prosthetic arm and a few combinations and scenarios that can completely trivialize boss fights, I will admit that. However, if you're not using that stuff, the game forces you to learn basically every single part of a boss's moveset. You have to become intimately familiar with all of its mechanics, its rhythm, and so on. And it leads to one of the most difficult and challenging, but also one of the most satisfying experiences you can have in video games. I think it is a far step up in difficulty from any of the Souls games, and that is saying something, because again, those games are no walk in the park either, but Sekiro is undeniably the most difficult Souls game out of all of the ones we've ranked so far for a first-time player's perspective. However, However, Sekiro is also the most learnable. While it has the steepest learning curve, once you get to the top of that mountain, so to speak, the game becomes incredibly easy, and so New Game Plus runs on Sekiro are actually far easier than something like a New Game Plus run on Bloodborne or on Dark Souls 3 or whatever, because much of the game's actual difficulty is in the learning process, not necessarily the equipment gathering or the RPG mechanics. A brand new player is 100% of the time going to get smoked by Genichiro for a little bit, but once you figure that out, you climb to the top of that mountain, you beat the game, and you have everything kind of ingrained into muscle memory, you never really unlearn how to whoop Genichiro's ass every single time, and that is just a testament to how good this game really is. At its core, Sekiro plays a lot more like a rhythm-based game than it does uh, an actual action game, which is quite strange, but it works in this context. I would say, to sum up, Sekiro definitely has the steepest learning curve out of any Souls game, but once it's learned it becomes significantly easier or it feels easier than the rest of those games because you've done all of the hard work personally already without any real way to over level for a boss or use the rpg mechanics to soften its difficulty if you've beat Sekiro, that means you've earned it and that's something that is you know worth taking to heart and so this is my ranking for every souls game easiest to hardest let me know you guys thought down below make sure to subscribe and i will see you all in the next one take it easy peace out